respected listeners allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his infinite mercy has told us in the quran in fact he has joined thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has joined being grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his remembrance faskuruni azkurkum washkuruli wa la takfurun that remember me i will remember you and be grateful to me it is very hard for us to get up in the wee hours of the morning to pray tahajjud in the middle of the night or to strive in the acts of worship which is hard for us because of our weakness in iman we are spiritually weak we are physically weak unlike our predecessors but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his infinite mercy has given us a very easy formula to get very close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when shaitan was told by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave paradise he asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah grant me this wish and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him take your wish and leave and then he told allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thumma la atiyannahum min bayni aydihim wa min khalfihim wa aymanihim wa an shama'ilihim wala tajidu aktharuhum shakirin oh allah i will come to your servants from their front from their back from their right and from their left and i will make most of them ungrateful to you i will make most of them ungrateful to you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran it's kind of a complaint but it's a complaint as usual with an extreme love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran says first he talks about prophet nuh alayhi salam allah says innahu kana abdan shakura indeed my servant nuh was a very grateful and thankful servant to me how much was he thankful for 950 years he called people towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imagine a person being thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all his life a life more than a thousand years rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on this verse said prophet nuh alayhi salam would take a bite of morsel, morsel in his food and he would thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would finish that bite take another bite he would again thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa qalilum min ibadi yashku very few of my servants very few of my servants are thankful to me i mean imagine, look at the look at the way allah is saying if mom gets upset if dad gets upset really upset for all the favors the dad has done the mom has done to the child and the child is ungrateful to every favor they have done let's say get out of my sight get out of this room but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very few of my servants my servants are ungrateful to me may allah make us among those select few respected listeners who thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sitting standing lying down alhamdulillah alhamdulillah for all the blessings allah has given me for us not being in constant pain in constant suffering us our beloved ones that itself is a great blessing and bounty of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sheikh sadi rahmatullah alayhi says every breath a person takes every breath a person takes one thanks is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when a person can breathe in and he cannot breathe out that is a blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a person can breathe out that is another blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
How much we thank, how much can we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respected listeners? How much can we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever says these words in the morning, he or she has thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the evening time. Allahumma ma azbah bi bi ni'matin aw bi ahdin min khalqik fa minka wahdak la sharika lak fa laka alhamd wa laka shukr. Oh Allah, all the good things that are coming to me this morning and to the entire creation are from you and you alone. There is no partner to you, therefore all praises and thanks be to you, O oh Allah. And when the evening time comes, replace the words from morning to evening. Allahumma ma amsa bi bi ni'matin aw bi ahdin min khalqik fa minka wahdak la sharika lak fa laka alhamd wa laka shukr. O oh Allah, all the good things are coming to me this evening and to the entire creation are from you and you alone. There is no partner to you, therefore all praises and thanks be to you, O Allah. Every night, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would go to sleep, he would say, Allahumma lak alhamd, all praises and thanks be to you, O Allah. How much? Zinat arshi, wa midada kalimati, wa adada khalqi, wa rida nafsi. As much as the weight of your throne, O oh Allah. As much as the ink can write, O oh Allah. As much as the number of creation, O oh Allah. As much as it pleases you, O oh Allah. Every night, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would go to sleep, he would say these words. Allahumma lakal hamdu maliyan. Tarafata inda kulli aynin wa tanafusi nafsin. O oh Allah, all praises be to Allah for every blink of the eye and for every breath that is taken. O oh Allah, all praises and thanks be to you for every blink of the eye and every breath that is taken. Imagine the blinking of the eyes from the time of Adam salam until the last person on the day of judgment. Every breath that is taken was subhi idha tanafas. As the morning, Allah swears by the morning as it breathes. We do not know how many creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that breathe, that blink, other than human beings and the jinns and the animals. I thank you for each blinking of the eye, every breath that is taken, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can make a dua like that. Waking up in the morning, Alhamdulillahilladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. All praises be to Allah who has given us life after death. Unto him we are returning back. The degree of a person eating and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respected listeners. One of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ash-shakur. The most appreciative, the most recognized. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the degree of a person eating and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same as the degree of a person who is fasting and he's patient. The degree of a person we eat and we thank Allah, Allah is telling the angels to write the reward of a person. He is a grateful servant of Allah and write a reward as if he or she fasted and were patient because of fasting. Just for thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Coming out of the bathroom, Allahu Akbar. Coming out of the bathroom, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma adhaba anni, alhamdulillahi ladhi adhaba anni al-adha wa afani. Thank you Allah, all praises be to Allah who has taken me out of this pain and difficulty and inconvenience. What a way to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respected listeners. What beautiful ways to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who eats a morsel of food, or a person who eats and thanks Allah, a person who drinks a sip of water and thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah becomes pleased with that person, said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Shafi'i rahmatullah alayhi would say, how can I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when thanking Him 
deserves yet another thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the horses in the Quran, talks about the horses in the Quran. وَالْعَادِيَاتِ ذَبْحًا فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَدْحًا فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ سُبْحًا فَأَثَرُنَا بِهِ نَقْعًا فَوَسَطُنَا بِهِ جَمْعًا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُودٍ Allah says, look at the horses. A man, a master gives him little hay and straw to eat because of the favor the man has done to the horse. Just giving little straw and hay, the horse jumps into the battlefield for his master. In the thick of the battlefield, in the dawn of Fajr time, jumps into the enemy lines. And then Allah says, وَإِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُودٍ But how come? How come the human being is so ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When I am doing so much, Allah, when I am giving so many favors to them, how come they are so ungrateful? Hassan Basri rahmatullahi says the word kanood, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُودٍ Kanood means a person remembers the blessings and the bounties but forgets the giver of the blessings and the bounties. Hmm. Bil hasanati was yarji'oon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we tested them. We tested them by giving blessings and bounties. And we also tested them with hardships to see who of them will return back, will turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which one of those will turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, one of the ten who were promised paradise by Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu anhu, he says we were tested with poverty. We were tested with poverty and we were patient. And then we were tested with wealth and we were not patient. We were not patient when we were tested with wealth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wealth Allah has given us, the blessings and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us respected listeners. This is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As are the afflictions that we are going through in our lives are also a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi would say, there are five afflictions in which a human being, a believer still needs to be grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as he's not committing shirk or committing sins. Number one, a person loses his health. A person has a loss in his wealth or health. He still needs to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because a person comes to Sahel ibn Abdullah rahmatullah and he says, a thief entered my house last night and he stole everything I had. And he complains to him. He stole everything I had. Sahel ibn Abdullah rahmatullah says, Did shaitan enter your heart and stole your iman? He says, of course not. Then he says, you need to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Any affliction we are going through, respected listeners, it could be worse. It could be worse. Usman al-Hiri rahmatullah is walking on the streets of Basra in Iraq. Somebody on purpose throws ashes on him. He goes in sajda, thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People say, but he threw ashes on you on purpose. He says, a person like me who deserves the fire of hell, only ashes are being thrown upon him. This is a means for him to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every affliction we are going through, respected listeners, it could be worse. It could be worse. A doctor giving medicine, bitter medicine to a patient. When he takes that medicine, he knows this medicine is going to cure him. When a surgeon bleeds the body of a person, the person knows this is temporary. I'm going to get better with this. 
Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, when a person goes through trials and tribulations in this life, this is the atonement of sins for that person. This is a means of forgiveness for the sins of the person. Because the sufferings in the hereafter are much worse than the sufferings in this world. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, because of the afflictions, how can Allah punish a person in the life of the hereafter? When he's going through afflictions and trials and tribulations in this life and he's being washed off of his sins, said Prophet ﷺ. Number four, respected listeners, every trial and affliction we are going through has already been written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 50,000 years before we were born, everything had been written in our khadr by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Shaykh Al Sayyid Rahmatullah falls down from a horse hard, gets hurt, but he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People say, But you got hurt. He says, this, this was already written in my taqdeer. This was already written for me in Allah. This was, uh, this was Allah has written in His decree that I would be falling on this day at this time, at this moment. That has been done. I'm over with it. Alhamdulillah. And number five, every affliction a human being goes through, the rewards Allah has prepared for those afflictions in the life of the hereafter. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, when the person finds out, sees the rewards given by Arhamul Rahimin, Akramul Akramin on the day of judgment, he will say, Oh Allah, I wish my body was cut with scissors and knives in this world so that I could take these rewards what you're giving me on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respected listeners make us be among those who thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in good times and in bad times. May Allah make us among those who thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah will call a group of people on the day of judgment. And he will say where are the grateful servants of mine? Where are the thankful servants of mine? A group will rise. Allah will tell them to enter paradise. May Allah make us among those respected listeners. Man lam yashkurin nas, lam yashkurillah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who has not thanked Allah subhanahu the one who has not thanked people, has not thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us the ability, respected listeners, to thank our wives who do so much at our homes. Raising children is not an easy task. Them wearing scarves, hijab, and going to the malls says a lot about their piety and taqwa, which we do not have. We don't go in topi to the malls, in sunnah dress, in, 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 in modest clothes to the malls like our sisters do. The amount of work they do at our homes, the way they take care of the children. Jazakumullahu khayran. May Allah reward you with even more good. Saying thank you is good, respected listeners. But saying Jazakumullahu Khair, Prophet Sallallahu asked a companion of him, How are you doing? He says, Fine, O Prophet of Allah. Then Prophet Sallallahu again asked, How are you doing? He says, Fine, O Prophet of Allah. Rasul Sallallahu again asked, How are you doing? He says, Alhamdulillah, fine, O Prophet of Allah. Rasul Sallallahu smiles at him and says, this is what I wanted to hear. The praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Husband says, Jazakumullahu khairan to his wife. Wife says, Jazakumullahu khairan to her husband. The children see growing up the parents thanking each other, respecting each other, appreciating each other. Children will do the same thing when they grow up. Nobody remembered the favors and thanked people like Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. He not only taught us the teachings of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he walked what he taught us, respected listeners. In the aftermath of the Battle of Hunayn, tremendous amounts of spoils of war came to the Muslims. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam waited for a week so that the people to whom it belonged would come back, repent and take everything that belonged to them, take it back. Nobody showed up. 
Then Rasul Sallallahu started distributing the spoils of war among the newly converts. The elite, he started with the elite of Mecca, the newly convert leaders of Mecca. Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, 100 camels and 40 coins of gold. He said, what about my son Yazid, O Prophet of Allah? 100 camels for Yazid, 40 coins of gold. What about my, my other son Muawiyah, O Prophet of Allah? 100 camels and 40 coins of gold to Muawiyah. Harith ibn Harith, 100 camels, 40 coins of gold. Safan ibn Umayyah, 100 camels, 40 ounces of gold. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, can I have 100 more camels? 100 moles, more camels to Safan ibn Umayyah. Then he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, 100 more, please. He said, 100 more camels to Safan ibn Umayyah. He gave, he gave. People who fought on horses, 20 camels. People who walked on foot, you know, 10 camels, 40 sheep. He gave, gave, gave. But the Ansar, who had defended Prophet with their lives, whose swords were still wet with the blood of the victory, they were not getting anything from the Prophet Because even to get a date from the blessed hands of Prophet was a great blessing and benediction for them. They were furious. They were talking amongst themselves. Hassan ibn Thabit, the poet, would say couplets. We did so much to the Prophet. We defended him with our lives. We supported him with our wealth. This is what we get, nothing. And they're taking everything away. When we save, when we turn around the defeat into victory. One of the leaders of the Ansar, Saad ibn Ubadah comes to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, oh Prophet of Allah, Ansar are furious. They're angry, oh Prophet of Allah. You have forgotten them. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, what is your opinion, oh Saad? He says, O Prophet of Allah, my opinion is the same as the opinion of the Ansar. Prophet says, let's go to the Ansar. He goes to the Ansar, looks at their faces. His face is beaming with appreciation and gratitude to the Ansar. And he says, O Ansar, are you upset for such a trivial thing? that I gave these people to keep them into the fold of Islam. Whereas I thought Islam was enough as a bounty for all of you. They kept quiet, didn't say anything. Rasulullah said, why don't you speak, O Ansar? Why don't you speak up? Say, Allah and his prophet are generous and bountiful. They kept quiet. Then Prophet said, O Ansar, you could have said, you could say, and you'd be speaking the truth, and I would be testifying to your truth. You could say that, you could say, O Prophet of Allah, before that Prophet وسلم, says, didn't I come to you when you were astray and Allah guided you? Weren't you poor and Allah enriched you of his bounty? Weren't you enemies unto one another and Allah joined your hearts? Ansar, Allah and his Prophet are far better and graceful, kept quiet. Then Prophet وسلم, says, you can say the truth, and I will testify to your truth. You can say that, O oh, Prophet of Allah, when people called you a liar, we believed in you. When you were frustrated, O oh, Prophet of Allah, we helped you with our wealth. When you were poor, O oh, Prophet of Allah, we gave you our money. When you, were, when you were without a home, without a shelter, O Prophet of Allah, we sheltered you and provided you home. You could say that, O Ansar. Nobody said anything. Then Prophet وسلم, said, O group of Ansar, O people of Medina, what do you think? If I was not of the Muhajirun, of the people of Mecca, I would rather be from the people of Ansar. If the Ansar would take, if, if the other people would take one direction, Ansar would take another direction, I would follow the way of the Ansar. They go with camels and sheep. You go with the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi to Medina. They go with camels and sheep. You go with the Prophet of Allah. When the Ansar heard this, their beards became wet with tears. Their souls, their hearts were enriched with these beautiful words of gratefulness and thankfulness to the Ansar. 
They said, Prophet of Allah's love and appreciation is enough for us, for us to take him back with us. He thanked the people. He didn't forget their favors, respected listeners. Let, may Allah give us the tawfiq not to forget the favors people have done to us, especially our parents, our wives, husbands to their wives, you know, our children, much subhanAllah, you know, keeping away from all the bad things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Aquli khuli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfiru fi Allah inhu al rahim Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salam ala rasulihi il kareem, amma ba'd. Awadhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin abdika wa rasulik, wa salli ala mu'minina wal mu'minat, wal muslimina wal muslimat, wa barika ala muhammadin wa zawajihi wa dhuriyatih. Inna Allah ya'amur bil adli wal ahsan, wa ita'idhi al-khurba, wa inhani al-fahshai wal munkari wal baghi, ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon, fathkuruni athkurkum, washkuru li wa la takfuroon, wa aqimi salam.